E rău? Păi da, e rău. Este la fel de rău? E rău. Fiindcă, dar facem lucrul ăsta, noi omenirea, Bun. nu cu bombe atomice, ci cu țeava Bun. de eșapament a mașinii. Chiar. Exact. Deci e rău. Întrebarea următoare este rău pentru cine? Rău pentru acei oameni care nu pot fi încadrați Așa. ca făcând parte dintr-un popor. Nu, e rău pentru toți și pentru oamenii buni și pentru oamenii răi. Că nu alege. Nu, nucleara nu alege. Omoară tot. Și oameni buni și oameni răi. Pentru cine e rău? E rău pentru o ființă vie. O ființă vie care se numește Planeta Pământ. Pentru Planeta Pământ nu e rău. E bine. Pentru că această ființă vie numită Planeta Pământ ieri a fost ziua sănătății pământului, a planetei. N-a mai fost a oamenilor. Nu mai a oamenilor. A fost a planetei ziua de ieri. Deci, în clipa de față, ființa vie numită Terra are o mână în gât și este sufocată de către om. Este sugrumată. Asta se întâmplă cu planeta în momentul de față. Deci, asta se întâmplă. Ființa vie numită Planeta Pământ este în situația Ucrainei acum. Iar agresorul este omul. Și dacă se distruge acum umanitatea, din ruinele ei va răsări natura în nou și Pământul va, va reînvia. He already threatened to use the nuclear weapons. He already have done this. So what, like, what else do you think should happen? In Kiev, parliamentarian turned freedom fighter Kira Rudik says NATO and the West are not taking seriously enough Putin's nuclear threat. NATO countries right now standing behind and saying, hush, hush, we will hope that he will not be using it. Uh, oh, we don't want to start the nuclear war. He already threatened to do it. This is what the dictators do. And he, the only thing that he responds very well is to power when you are able to say, no, no, you're not going to do it. You know how we say about the war and shame? That if the war comes to your, to your country and you choose the shame, then you get both war and the shame. And this is what NATO is doing right now. His threatened to use nuclear weapons, I think, is to terrify the international community. So we go to our leaders so to acquiesce and uh, don't get involved in, in Ukraine. And that's obviously the last thing that we're, we're going to do. I think the other thing is if he is prepared to use nuclear weapons, he's probably prepared to do, use almost any weapons. Uh, and I've seen chemical weapons used extensively in Syria, and that is something that we need to be really concerned about. Putin's propaganda has trumpeted its so-called mother of all bombs, the most powerful non-nuclear explosive ever created. And there are reports this terrifying weapon has already been used in Ukraine. The objective of Putin here is to maximize civilian casualties, to blast them into surrender, to essentially break their will. So what he's doing is he's committing war crimes on a day-by-day -day basis in Ukraine. He's killing thousands of Ukrainian civilians. Putin has conducted an unprecedented limitation on rules of engagement during this war. He has said that Russian troops will not attack civilians, that Russian troops will He's not attack... You're talking rubbish, right Tony. Right You're talking rubbish. You're a disgrace. What is like a rubbish? It's like, really, what's going on here? Have you even hurt yourself? Have you even looked at yourself about that? This is a total nonsense. Vladimir Putin's unprovoked assault on Ukraine is the largest ground war in Europe since World War II. But if we are dealing with a madman, what chance is there for any reasonable end to this conflict? Is compromise, even a backdown, a psychological impossibility for Putin? Experts have said that his aggression, narcissism and lack of empathy suggest he could be suffering a mental disorder. He is showing all the signs, is he not, of what would be classically considered a psychopath? Yep, I agree with that. I think he is a psychopath. If we, if we accept that this is part of his makeup, uh, what is he thinking right now? What is he personally he thinking? He probably believes he is winning because he believes his own twisted logic 
and no one's telling him you're not winning. Uh, everything's going horribly wrong. And when he is confronted with that reality, uh, I take you back to the Führer in the bunker you know, situation. He goes into a volcanic rage. Who knows what he's capable of doing when he's finally confronted with the reality that he's created? He has utterly failed Russia as a leader. He's failed the Russian people and he's threatened the world. And when he's confronted with that, I worry that he's going to escalate, that he's going to choose, I must push forward no matter how much it costs. All or nothing. All or nothing. There does exist one possibly remote outcome for the crisis ignited by Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. With Russia sanctioned by the world, its banks unable to do international business and its economy and currency spiralling, Putin may yet be defeated from within. What is his weak point? Where is his weakness? His weakness to the Russian people. Stand fast, Tony, obviously supporting him and others like him. But I'm sure the Russian people, if they understand the crimes against humanity that are being committed in their name, then they will do something about it. And let's hope there are a few good men and women close to Putin who sees this disaster unfolding and will aid the rest of us to remove him and prevent Ukraine developing into a third world war. The reason these attacks are happening is because Vladimir Putin's in power. One man who has suffered because of Putin's apparent paranoia is Russian resistance leader Vladimir Karamurza, who, at great risk, is currently leading protests in Moscow against Putin's invasion of Ukraine. The reason these attacks are happening is because we have an undemocratic, corrupt, authoritarian regime established and maintained by the close circle of former Soviet KGB officers around Vladimir Putin and led by Vladimir Putin. You know, we have no free elections in our country. We have no independent media on a large scale in our country. We have hundreds, and this is by conservative estimates, hundreds of political prisoners sitting in our, sitting in our prisons today, not because they committed a crime, but because they have crossed the paths uh, in, in one way or another of the, uh, of the current regime. But anti-war protests are gathering force on Putin's home soil, despite a violent crackdown and a Russian media blackout. Tony, you've been in Moscow, you've just come back from Moscow. It is a truth that uh, Putin has shut down the independent media. Former Australian diplomat Tony Kevin supports Vladimir Putin's regime. Russian people still have access to internet. They follow internet avidly. They, they, they have increasingly less access to the internet because the Putin regime is throttling websites, it's shutting down websites. It has in introduced draconian laws that impose 15 years of prison for fake news about the war. And, and fake news in, in the language of the Putin regime means anything that does not accord with the official lies. Putin is waging a genocidal war in Ukraine, but he's also waging a war against his own people. Can I ask you this? Would you love Russia less if Vladimir Putin was not there? It's an irrelevant question because Vladimir Putin has the confidence of his people. Right. He has the confidence. He has their confidence because he's suppressed freedom of speech, he's suppressed normal politics, he's destroyed democratic institutions. You silence them, but he has their confidence. I've been there for the last month. The Russia I lived in for the last month is not the country you described. People are not silenced. They're proud of their country. They, they will not accept the narrative that you Western information warriors are trying to gaslight them with. Russia will be disconnected from the internet. They will go like internal. This will happen just because Putin uh, already closed all the independent media. But I don't think that will change a lot for Russian people because they're being kept like in the dark. Despite Putin's attempts to suppress the truth, it is clear that many Russians don't like this war. Hundreds have already been arrested while protesting against it. Malcolm and Robert, is it possible that Putin will be defeated by his own people? Is that possible? Look, that's the best case outcome here. And when it becomes clear to Putin and to the people around him that Russia is losing and losing badly, um, 
two possibilities emerge. Either Putin will be deposed in a coup d'etat, which comes with risks, because if Putin, like an animal cornered, fears that he's got no other place to turn, he'll lash out and escalate, and we're back to the nuclear question. And that's what really worries me, is that second option. Robert, the oligarchs, is it possible that they have got some sway? I think we are beginning to see splits within the elite. The signs of how uncomfortable some of the people around Putin are was evident at the surreal session of his Security Council where he basically humiliated a whole series of his subordinates publicly. That's a sign of just how deranged Putin is now and how unstable this regime is. Is there also one more solution to the world's most dangerous man? Would America, the West, come to consider him such a threat to peace and security that he would be personally targeted, taken out as just another terrorist? This is a bold question, but is it possible the West may view him as a terrorist and deal with him as they have other terrorists? Yep, I agree with that. And for too long, we have let him get away with atrocities. That if it had been someone, some leader in the Middle East, he would have been bombed by now. You have an aggressive psychopath in the Kremlin with 6,500 nu nuclear weapons and a taste for blood. He invaded and annexed the Crimea in 2014. He got no response. Uh, he invaded and annexed parts of Georgia in 2008. He got no response. He assassinated people with chemical weapons in Britain. Virtually no response. He shoots down an airliner, MH17, over Donetsk. No response. Yeah. If you if you were sitting with uh, Vladimir Putin, and you, of all of us, you, you'd be the closest to doing that, um, Tony, what would you be saying to him? I believe that Putin is the legitimate president of Russia. He speaks on behalf of the Russian people. I would be saying, keep your nerve. Look at all the road and take it off. Just coming out of the great pandemic, we are now living through the most perilous time of this current century. Direct confrontation between NATO and Russia is World War III, something we must strive to prevent. As we've examined tonight, there are no easy paths to peace, no easy means of stopping Vladimir Putin's campaign of terror in Ukraine without seemingly provoking what could become a global conflict. Most of all, as we've discussed, there is no easy way of dealing with a tyrant and a madman if that is what Vladimir Putin truly is. So, are we up to it? And what will it take? Our experts believe we could be entering the most dangerous days of the war so far. This is the most serious crisis humanity has ever faced. For 20 years, Putin has destroyed every single check and balance in Russia. He is clearly psychologically deranged. He is seriously deluded. He enjoys raising the possibility of nuclear war. His propagandists boast that he's more virile than Soviet leaders because he's prepared to wage nuclear war. We are in extreme danger. I don't accept the false information narrative. Alone with his views, former Australian diplomat Tony Kevin they, they really continues to challenge our other America. guests' views of Putin. I've been to Russia, I've seen both sides. I've formed independent views and I will continue to express them without intimidation. And uh, I'm sure that Ukraine will be a happier place, whether in a few weeks or in a couple of months, this will pass. What? The Russian system is going to be strong and independent, and it won't be intimidated by the sort of nonsense I've heard spoken here today. I'm really concerned, you know, when I, if, if Tony really believes the metaphors he's talking about, and if I was an Australian, and I, and I had the honour of serving with the Australian military for a couple of years, you know, I'd be really ashamed that sort of rubbish that he's purporting there. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. A thought that this will all be over and people won't be killed. I bet you there are thousands and thousands of people killed, and most of them will be Ukrainian 
civilians, and we must do all we can to reduce that, and equally, all we can to find some sort of peace. I think we're on the precipice. We're looking over an abyss that uh, if we fall into it, um, you know, end of. It's a war not between Ukraine and Russia. This is the world between values. This is the war between future and the past, between rebuilding the Russian empire and a new world where countries can be free and decide for themselves where the world sovereignty means something. Because what we are facing right now is a real nuclear threat. What we are facing right now is a real humanitarian catastrophe. And what we are facing right now is a real screw up in all mutual trust between the countries. We are at a really dangerous point in human history, probably the most dangerous since the end of the Second World War. And I wonder what future historians will write. Was uh, 2022 the year that the Third World War began? All things are possible, including the very worst case scenarios. Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. He is a Hitler with nuclear weapons. Well, this will be a moment in history we will always remember and some say a turning point for the world and how we live in it.